In this lecture, we're going to look at JSON, which is the JavaScript object notation, and it has been developed as a data interchange mechanism. And because it's plain text, it's really easy for humans to read and write it. But it's also easy for machines to parse and generate, which means that it's going to be very useful. Part of its usefulness is the independence that it has from any programming language. We could write a JSON string from a Java program and read it into a C Sharp program. And in an enterprise application where you have got potentially many different types of application written in all kinds of languages, JSON then becomes very attractive for communication between these non-homogeneous programming languages. Now, the syntax is very simple. You can follow that link to get the details of it. And here's a couple of examples. We've got an object. Now, notice that the object values and fields are delimited by these braces. And within the braces, we have got name and value pairs. So this is the name of the field, and that's its value. The name of the field, its value, and so on. And they are separated by commas. So that's an object delimited by braces. Now, just a collection of values, it might be a list, for example, is delimited by these square brackets and just has a set of values that are separated by commas. So here are some more examples. If we were given this JSON string, then we could identify this either as an object with three fields or as three separate variables. If we are presented with this JSON string, then it could be interpreted or read as an array of values, or it could be an array list if you're working in Java and so on. You'll see that we are able to interpret these strings in several ways, which can be useful. It might be, for example, that one program outputs an array and another program reads it as an array list because that's more convenient for that reading program. And so this shows flexibility of JSON. Here we've got a collection of objects. So here's the list and here are the objects, two of them. And then we've got one object. There are two fields with just single values and then a third field, which is a list or a collection of objects. Here's another example. This one is an object that contains other objects. So here's our first object. There's the braces that delimit that object, a field, and then another field, which is actually a list of objects. And so we could read this as a band object that contains a name and a list, an array, an array list, whatever you want to interpret it as, of person objects. Now, JSON strings are very useful for a RESTful API. As this example shows, we've got an HTTP POST request that is targeting the create endpoint. And this content type property identifies the payload as being in JSON format. So that tells the API when it receives this request that the payload that follows needs to be interpreted as a JSON string. And then we've got our JSON string, which is, in this case, an object representing Mickey Mouse. The nice thing about Spring Boot is that the RESTful API will automatically convert outgoing objects to JSON strings and incoming JSON strings to objects, which makes our programming a little bit easier. Here's an example. You can see we have an endpoint. It's a get mapping. And this method is going to return a list of strings but it needs to be returned as JSON, but that's okay. All we need to do, and you can't see all the detail here, but you don't need to. All we're doing is creating a list, an array list. We're adding some strings to that array list, and then we simply return the object. 
the Spring Boot environment will then automatically convert that list of strings into a JSON string and send that to the client. And we can see here that when the client makes this request, what it gets in return is the list of string objects and an, a response code of 200, which says that all worked perfectly. So that illustrates that the object is automatically converted to a JSON string. In this example, we are posting. So here's a, an HTTP post request. Again, we're saying that the content type of the payload is JSON. And here is the payload, the object, which is a JSON string, that is going to be posted to the create endpoint. So over here, we've got the create path for this post mapping, which targets the create person method. This JSON string that is sent as the payload will automatically be converted to a person object because the annotation request body says that this payload is to be converted into the person object because it, that is the body of the request. And then we're processing person P. In this case, we're doing very, very little, in fact, nothing, and simply just returning P. But notice that we're returning P as an object of type person. And so that will automatically be converted back from the person object to a JSON string. So here in this example, we see conversion from JSON string to object and from object back to JSON string. Now, when we are converting objects to a JSON string, what's happening in the background is that there is a JSON serializer, which is a piece of code that will take an object and serialize it. In other words, convert it into a JSON string. But when you have a bi-directional association, you get problems. You can see here that objects of class myA have a reference to objects of class myB, and we can get and set B. In the myB class, we have another reference, but this time back to objects of class myA. So if I've got an object A and an object B, then object A has a reference to B, and object B has a reference back to A. And so we have a cyclic association. So when the JSON serializer tries to convert the object of my A and the object of my B, this is what's going to happen. First, the serializer will output the field A followed by the object B that this field refers to. But when we try then to serialize B, it produces a field A because it points back to A. And so you get a recurring cycle. Convert A, which means you're going to have to convert B. But to convert B, you've then got to convert A. And to convert A, you've got to convert B. And then A, and then B, and then A, and then B, and so on, until you get a stack overflow exception. Now, generally, in Java, there's a very easy way to stop this infinite recursion, and that is to use the keyword transient. So we decide which of these two classes is the major class and which one is the minor. And in the minor class, we put in the keyword transient in front of the reference back to the object of the major class. And that stops the recursion because anything flagged as transient will not be serialized. Therefore, when the object of my A is serialized, it will attempt to serialize B and it will ignore this field because it's marked as transient and that will break the cycle. And so the JSON serialization will work nicely, except when we do this in Spring Boot, it doesn't. So when we put in a request to this endpoint, 
and it produces or tries to return a JSON string representing A and B, and B has got the transient keyword, it still causes the problem that we were trying to solve with the transient keyword. And the reason for that is because in Spring Boot, the JSON serializer does not detect the keyword transient. And that's because by default, the serializer will use the public getter and setter methods to work out which fields to serialize. So it's not focusing on the field declarations, it's looking at these declarations. And so to solve this, we need to put in a property for the application. Now, this line needs to be inserted into a file. You can find the file in your Spring Boot project. You can look for the resources folder and in there you will find application.properties. And all you've got to do is just to copy that line into that file, save it, and then it all works perfectly because it tells the Spring Boot JSON serializer that it should not ignore the transient keyword. As soon as you do that, the serialization works perfectly. So we've looked at JSON. We've seen that it's actually quite straightforward. We've also seen that it's very flexible and that makes it ideal for communication between our clients and the RESTful API that we want to use.